Good morning folks, welcome back to another video. Wow, it's absolutely beautiful today. Beautiful winter day. And today's topic is all about keeping deer out of my beautiful little wildlife pond. Well, my normally beautiful little pond is an absolute mess. Yeah, it's pretty ugly looking for sure. The deer have knocked rocks in the pond and basically loosened them around the edges and trampled all the edge around the pond, making it look like a pigsty. So I'm going to start with the rapid area where the little waterfalls is and just uh, clean out all the sludge. Not going to be pretty. There's old leaves and debris and who knows what's in there. Could be some interesting creatures. Clean all that up first, then drain all the water out of the pond and um, clean it up. So I've got about uh, two and a half gallons of water here and uh, I'm going to take some uh, some vinegar I had laying around and wasn't using uh, just to use it as a cleaning solution. We'll add some of that. Seems about right. I have to admit I've been putting this off going, you know, I'll get to it. But what really prompted it was, yup, I ran out of water with my 1200 gallon tank because essentially this year our monsoons were so sparse that now I'm going to have to have an, a water shipment. So I'll call the water company Kerfman Water Supply and they're usually here pretty quick. And the minimum they can send me, which I've said on other videos, is 1,600 gallons. So that means that my little tank holds 1,200 and conveniently this pond is about 400. So I'll put on some gloves uh, because in the Arizona desert you just never know who's going to be living among all those rocks. One thing about pond liner that you got to get right, this stuff is exposed in the sun for a lot and I still see no degradation of the pond liner and that's because this is the really expensive stuff from Firestone, the same company that makes car tires. So I find I have to take the rocks off in layers because otherwise I can't remember where they went. So much action happens at this pond it's really worthwhile taking care of it. Okay, that part's done. Looks pretty good. So I built this ramp to keep uh, animals from just drowning. They can climb up here and then make an escape from the pond. And birds land on it and take a drink when the water's low. But it's got to be cleaned out. I'm sure there's a lot of crud in there. Hopefully just crud and not anything else if you get my drift. Now, before we start the serious draining of the pond, we'll get our fake plastic water lilies out of here. They were very expensive and uh, never have to worry about them dying. Okay, we got our trusty little pump here and uh, let's put it to work. All right, first into the deep we go. Dive, dive, dive.
Yep, looks like I am going to have to get a new hose. Okay, I think it's time to unplug the pump. Because that's pretty well drained. And we'll get that out of there. And of course, none of this precious water goes to waste. Uh, I will uh, be uh, given a nice drink with refreshing uh, water with all kinds of protein in it from uh, the uh, insect and algae in the water to my really great Afghan pines, which have come along really nicely after being chewed to pieces by, you guessed it, mule deer. And I kind of like to give them a drink down the needles, let it trickle down kind of all natural as opposed to just dumping it at the base. There we go, this guy got five gallons, and then the next guy down here will get five gallons as well. So also, here's some interesting facts about deer uh, that you might not know. Uh, one of the major predators of songbird nestlings in some areas is white-tailed deer, particularly uh, the Dakotas. Uh, it's been recorded them actually taking uh, nestlings and eggs more than any other predator. For example, they had their cams set up to document badgers and weasels and, and uh, foxes and a variety of other mammals that would take birds, eggs, and nestlings. And nope, number one uh, predator on nestlings was white-tailed deer. Wow, that's bright. And now the most fun part of all cleaning the entire bottom of assorted things. Yeah. Now I see here's a dead mouse, so I hope he didn't chew in any way. Because if he chewed in the pawn liner, I'm in trouble. Put all the rocks that I use to hold down the rock in a roll in a separate pile. Smells like when I had hip waders on back in Canada doing wetland surveys, plant surveys when I'm chest deep in pond water. I don't see any holes where the mouse would have chewed, so that's good. Raven's going talk, talk, talk. Oh, definitely making progress, don't you think?
So I think what's really important to mention, folks, um, I'm not being mean to these deer. They have other places to drink really close by. Two of my neighbors both offer water for them. They just seem to absolutely love my pond. Maybe it's because it's more natural looking. Don't know. But anyway, uh, it makes things really difficult because this year was really, really dry. That meant I had to buy three water shipments, each at $225. And when you get 14 deer just chugging that water, I mean, they got good taste. It's all, <laughs> it's all been treated so it's drinkable and everything. But still, that's just over the top when they've got other places to go. I can't stress that enough, folks. They can easily walk to other places. They just like this spot. Well, one of the things I know about deer is they, um, their vision is interesting in that they don't have a lot of depth of field in their vision, but their peripheral vision is absolutely brilliant. So I've thought of a lot of things for this, folks, and one of the things I tried, I tried a lot of things, uh, chasing the deer um, and putting uh, big scary eyes, like for Halloween, that were just basically cardboard cutouts and sticking them beside the pond. That didn't work at all. I saw the deer actually practically tripping over them to, just to get to the water. So that didn't work at all. But I thought, you know, maybe I could simulate a predator. And what about a lion? How about that? That should scare them. But all I can come up with is I can get a fake African lion and use that. Yeah, that'll work, I think. First off, I bought this inflatable uh, water polo ball, although it says volleyball, and I was sure I ordered a water polo ball. Maybe somebody can tell me, those of you who are really into sports, can you tell me, is a water polo ball and a volleyball the same thing? Leave it in the comments below and just kind of educate me. Thanks. So anyway, here we go. Then I got this guy. Told you I was going to use a lion. And here he is. His name is Leo. I already named him. Okay, I need to get out more. Anyway. So I had this harness that was used to hold a camping mat together and keep it in place, all rolled up. So I think this will work. Put that around there, that one, like that. And then this one, like so. And I'll cross them over like that. And that should stay better. Left over piece this loop is going to come in real handy. I had this leftover eye bolt just kicking around and I can use that. I'll tie this through here. Like so. That seems pretty firm. Okay, now that's going to hang down. And that's really important. Okay, Leo, let's fit you out good. Now, let's test him out in the water. This should be fun. All right, here we go. Cool. Pretty good. I think I'll adjust it a bit though. Just move his head a little bit that way. You ready to scare some deer, Leo? And again, knowing that deer are so startled by movement, I found these uh, beach balls on sale at my local Dollar General. 
I'll add them too. And with any little bit of breeze, everything moves, and that makes things even more scary. So just as a side note, I will fence this property because, um, yep, believe it or not, I had a couple old range cows sneak in at night and chug water out of my pond as well. And I won't go into it because it's a big topic, but here, just bear in mind if you come here, that range cattle have a right to be all over your property and do whatever they want. And it's up to you to fence your area. And I don't have a problem with that. That's just part of what goes on here. And I respect ranchers and their hard work. And that's just it. Well, it's definitely a cold one this morning. Looks like the hummingbird feeder is just starting to unthaw. And it's about nine in the morning here. And uh, that once that unthaws, that'll be ready for use. And the only clients I'm getting these days or uh, customers are Anna's hummingbirds. Tough, tough little bird. Um, they even actually nest in January, believe it or not. So just to touch on that topic briefly about should you leave a hummingbird feeder up in the winter, uh, Anna's hummingbirds here really appreciate it. And also remember most hummingbirds, with the exception of Anna's here, uh, will migrate not because it's cold, but because of day length. Pretty simple actually, when the days get shorter, that triggers the hummingbird's biology to tell them, you know what, we need to move and migrate. So thank you so much folks for watching all these videos and a big shout out to those who've been asking me about the construction on my big home. It will keep going of course and I will be filming it. It's just I'm taking a little bit of a break with the holidays and then we'll get back at it. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, hit the notification bell thing, that'll let you know when my next video is coming up. And I so appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you again. See you on the next video.